بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ رب العالمین و صلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد و علیہ و صحبہ و سلم اما بعد As we're approaching the end of Ramadan, the holy month of Ramadan, and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our Ramadan bi-idhnillah, ya rabbil alameen. It's very important for us to know the ahkam pertinent to zakat, zakat al-fitr. And zakat al-fitr is the zakat or charity that must be paid at the end of Ramadan and it acts as a sort of expiation for the shortcomings in fasting and it allows for the poor to rejoice at least to some extent on that great day of Eid and Zakat al-Fitr it's an obligation on every Muslim that has enough provision to last them for a day and an evening meaning that if someone is truly impoverished and they do not have enough provisions to last them for a day from the day in the night of Eid then they do not have to pay zakat al-fitr and the amount of zakat al-fitr is a sa'a a sa'a min something that can be measured that can be anywhere from rice to beans to wheat and flour and dates and other things that can, and raisins and so forth and if a person is unable to find those things like that then they can give a sa for the in accordance with the uh what the people of that that place what they eat of the food that is common in that place so if meat is common in that place and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best some of the ulama they say it is not restricted to those things but yet a person can give whatever is the common food of that place and it can be corn it can be wh- whatever and zakat al-fitr one of the things we need to know approximately a sa'a in today's form of measurement is approximately anywhere from two and a half to three kilograms of measured dry measured food so if you're going to get if you want to be safe and what will be sufficient if you pay three kilograms of rice for example for one family member and the head of the family is responsible for the amount of people that is charged that they're in authority over so if they have seven children and a wife then they will pay for their seven children for each child and they'll pay for their wife and they'll pay and he'll pay for himself so that would be uh, nine sa'a sa'at of uh, of the food for zakat and another issue regarding the Zakat al-Fitr is that it is recommended it is mustahab to pay the Zakat al-Fitr the day of Eid before the Salat before the Eid prayer so right before then it is recommended this is the Sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and this is the best time and it is not permissible to delay it after the day of Eid and it is also permissible though to pay a day or two before the Eid before the Eid to pay a person's zakat letting us know that there's some room there with regards to paying the zakat 
and that gives us the opportunity so it is permissible as the Prophet ﷺ allowed for some of the Sahaba to pay uh, before so you can pay a day or two and some of the ulum they say in three because Ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala used to pay before a day or two so it is uh, for a day or two my, uh, so that that's a mistake to say three days but a day or two before the time before the Eid prayer before Eid and the zakat should be paid to those people who are in need from amongst the Muslims that a person pays their zakat to those people at the time for paying the zakat to those people those needy Muslims which are in need for that zakat and those are just some of the basic rulings pertinent to zakat al-fitr in Ramadan and as Ibn Umar said anhu, that the Prophet وسلم, made it an obligation to pay zakat al-fitr fi Ramadan or min Ramadan he made it an obligation to pay the zakat al-fitr for the month of Ramadan and it acts as a sort of expiation for some of the for the shortcomings that we have in our fasting and inshallah ta'ala we hope that in the next sitting that we'll bring some details regarding the zakat al-fitr and I ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam